Hey, how's it going? Today I want to show you how to tempo map a live recording. Now, if you play with a band, then you normally don't play to a click. Sometimes you go in the studio, you put a click on, and then suddenly just something is missing from the band's chemistry, right? So today I want to show you a way of tempo mapping a live recording. So even if you didn't use a click, you can still bring it into your DAW and you can add software instruments to it. You can time sync your delays to it and reverbs and things like that. So I got this video right here. Let me just play a little bit of it. It's just me improvising. And as you can see, I have a delay. So if we time stretch this, my delay will fall out of whack, right? The delay is correct. It's timed digitally, it's perfect and tight, but I'm not. So what we can do is instead of stretching the audio and losing some quality that way and kind of untightening the delay, we can stretch the length of different measures until it falls into the correct tempo. So without further ado, let's get started. So in my DAW, I'm gonna zoom in on my waveform. The first thing we need to do is put the first transient on the first beat of a bar, right? So I'm gonna play my track. And that first note has to go on beat one of any measure. So I'm just going to zoom way in here, put my edit cursor on beat one of a measure and just bring it right in. Once I do that with my edit cursor on beat one of that measure, I'm going to press shift and C. We'll see this menu and we'll just hit okay. We don't care what the tempo is right now. And now we're going to find the first beat of the next measure. So that's this note right here. I'm going to tap to it and it's got to come to beat one of that measure. So again, I'm going to click and press shift C. Then we'll hit okay again. And now I'm going to hold command and control and then drag that tempo marker all the way to the transient. Now, if I zoom out, you can see the tempo value of the first tempo marker has changed to 117, which is the correct ballpark. So now our first measure is synced to the tempo. And we'll just keep doing this. I'm just gonna play it, find beat one of every measure, place the tempo marker there and drag it to the correct transient and then rinse and repeat. But something that you'll soon find very annoying is that by default, the tempo marker is set to shift C. And every time I press shift C, I'll get a menu. So I'm gonna make a few adjustments to Reaper's default hotkeys by opening my action list and looking for the command to insert tempo marker without opening a dialog box and I'm gonna assign that to my shift C and then we'll take the one where you open the dialog and I'm gonna assign that to control shift C so I'm gonna press the hot key say okay to replacing it and then the command right below that which was our default I'm gonna assign that to control shift and C and we're gonna get back to working so again, to recap, I'm gonna go through the measures. I'm gonna find beat one of every measure and I'm gonna insert a tempo marker there with shift C that we now defaulted to open without opening a dialog box. Then I'm gonna control command and drag it to the transient. And as you work more, they get tighter and tighter. The first few measures are the hardest and then it gets easier and easier and very automatic. So some measures you can even skip because it already has fallen into the tempo correctly. But there's another problem. This whole command then control drag I'm fighting to be really slow and not very precise. So there's something else we can add to make our workflow even easier for us. And that's by going to the actions list and finding the SWS action to bring closest tempo marker to edit cursor. And I'm gonna assign that to command control and C. So this way I will insert a tempo marker at the beginning of measures, then tap to transient, then just press command control and C and it will automatically bring that to the transient. So all we need are these four keys I'm gonna put them on the bottom of the screen as well just for you to reference as you watch the video and then rinse and repeat find the transient of the beat one and then insert a tempo marker there and then bring it to the transient with our latest hotkey so this next measure is fine, but measure 20 again, we need to bring it in. So now let's use our new custom action. I'm going to insert a tempo marker with shift C. I'm going to tap to transient and then press command control C and Bob's your uncle. Now, every time you insert a tempo marker, go back and check because the previous uh, marker's value has changed because we use the command and control mouse modifier. So just make sure that one's fine. My command and control modifier is set to move project tempo time signature marker adjusting previous and current tempo. Very useful for this application and others. So I'm just gonna keep going. I'm gonna playing, finding the beats, making sure everything's to tempo. Whenever I see a problem, let's look at it one more time. Insert command C, tap to transient, control command C, and now it's okay. One more time, beep, bap, 
boinks. And then when you do this a few times, the rest gets really easy and automatic. You can turn your brain off and just keep doing it without even realizing that you're doing it. So as I insert tempo markers, the previous values become correct. So I can just delete the last tempo marker too. So now let's listen to it so far. So as I do this a little bit, most of them become correct. So in those cases, I just press shift C to preserve that tempo for that spot and I move on. I don't need to move anything to transient, just press shift C. And now everything before that is kind of saved and we can't fuck that up later. So I'm just pressing shift C as I'm going. I'm not even stopping the video and then found one that doesn't work. You know what to do. So we're just going, going. As you can see, the more time passes and the more I tempo map, the less work I have further down the line. Now, if something is too early, you can adjust the grid size so you can come back to it from behind and tap to that transient and tempo map it like that. Now sometimes tap to transient doesn't work because maybe on your beat one you don't have a really clear transient like I don't have right here. So if that happens, my transient is a little further ahead so I can just use our mouse modifier to bring it to the correct transient. So that happens sometimes. Also sometimes you may not be able to correctly map uh, beat one, but you can always map, you know, beat two or beat three or beat four. Whichever one of the notes in the measure that you have the most clear transient for is probably the best thing to use to map it. So like I'm going to find the transient where the one is not very clear, but the two is clearer. Sometimes you just got to play it a few times and find the two instead of the one or find the four instead of the one. So in measure 52, my one isn't clear. So I'm going to use the and of the one to do my tempo mapping. So same procedure. And then I'll just delete that because the previous one was OK. And now I'm going, putting anchors wherever it's correct. And it's pretty much correct till the end, little adjustments here and there. And though I sped up the video for your convenience, uh, in reality, this only took me about 15 minutes. At the beginning of the video, the time on my screen cap was 11.20 and I was done basically by 11.35. So it doesn't really take too long of a time. And the more you do this, the faster you get at it. And just to show you that it works, I'm gonna now edit some drums to it. So I'm, I'm using a real recording that I did without a click and I'm gonna create a MIDI drum track that goes with it and you'll see that it it falls perfectly in place. So let's hear that. So I have my metronome. You can see that it's in time. And when the drum comes in, it's going to be OK as well. So essentially I just improvise on a track and it's basically perfectly in time with a software instrument that I added later, no tempo problems. I can add delays to it that are time synced to the DAW and there won't be a problem. And when you're listening to the track, if you found any spots that are not tight enough, you know, between two measures that you mapped, go and map B2 of that, B3 of that, map it as tightly as you want it to be. But a little bit of humanism never killed anybody either. That's the whole point of doing something like this is to bring humanity back into modern music, if you ask me. So right there, I heard that some measures weren't like super tight. So I'm just going to go and kind of map between the two measures. So that measure is mapped. The measure after is mapped. Maybe put one there. Maybe fix the beat four of that one just to get it as tight as I want with the snare. It helps that I'm playing a very rhythmic thing. If you're playing a more melodic thing or kind of a patty synth, it's harder to do this, but possible. 
And in about 40 minutes, I was completely done with everything. I just tightened things up as best as I could and as best as I wanted, as much as I wanted. You can just do the beat one and be done with it. Or you can go hard and, you know, map every single beat and sub beat. So let's hear the rest. So that's it when the drum goes out I don't need to map the rest of it um, you know the guitar it just stands alone on its own and this is really useful if you do live recordings or if you have live recordings of something you want to you know map it to a music video that you made or just you know if you just had an idea and you didn't uh, record it with a tempo all of this can help with those things so that's it let me know if you have any questions in the comments and I'll see you later bye